Hey guys, Jessica here, your furry family coach. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a real quick update on our transition to a raw food diet for our cats and dogs. And I've got good news and I've got bad news. So stick around and I'm gonna tell you all about it. Hey guys, Jessica here. And like I said, I've got good news and I've got bad news. But this video is an update for our transition to a raw food diet for our dogs and cats. Um, if you've been following our journey and it's been a little while now, our dog has been transitioned to a raw food diet for quite some time. She's good to go. She loves her raw food and we don't really have any issues there. Um, I am learning about adding some supplements into her um, raw food diet. She has a completely balanced raw food diet and she's still pretty young at around four, four and a half, five years old, somewhere around there. We rescued her, or well, we adopted her from a rescue in Mexico. So I'm not really 100% sure of her age, but she's somewhere between that four and five year mark. Um, so she's not really exhibiting like a whole lot of issues um, that you would normally see in like older dogs with arthritis or skin issues or allergy issues. She doesn't really have anything like that going on. So um, we haven't really looked too big into the supplement arena yet, but I'm uh, learning because you never know when you're going to need it. Um, but our the big update today is on my cats. And um, for me, transitioning our uh, seven cats over to a raw food diet has been um, difficult. <laughs> it's been difficult, not necessarily because any one of them has a particular issue going on. Um, just the fact that there are seven of them and they all have different things that they like and dislike. And um, at one point, one of my cats decided my oldest, in fact, decided, she, this was a while ago, she decided she was just gonna stop eating. And um, because she, no matter what I offered her, I went to the store and bought the worst junky cat food I possibly could, super stinky, I know not good for her cat food, um, just to get her to eat and she wouldn't eat it. And um, so she had to be hospitalized and it was this whole thing we went through. And I actually did a video about, um, lipidosis uh, uh, um, a while back so you can kind of refer back to that if you want but anyway she's good now and she's happy and healthy um, but we've had some issues switching our cats over to a raw food diet it's been is really been difficult and the fact that my oldest cat went through that really scared me a lot because I don't want to put her through that again and at this point I know she's 15 years old um, she's, she, she may not transition to a, a raw food diet and I have to, I have to live with that. You know, I can continue to try different raw foods and making my own recipes. And unfortunately, Radcat, uh, just went out of business, which was the only raw food that my other cats would eat. Um, so it's, it's been, it's, it's been a long journey with my cats. So if anybody else out there with cats is having these struggles, I completely understand. Um, I see so many people on social media who have successfully transitioned their cat to a raw food diet. And sometimes that makes me really feel terrible about myself that I'm not doing the right thing. Um, so really this video is for you guys who are struggling because I want you to know that I understand and that you're not alone. Um, so what was, uh, I said I had good news and I had bad news. So let's start with the bad news because I always like to end with good news. Um, the bad news is my cat Riley who had PU surgery a while back. Um, it's actually been two, gosh, it's been two years I believe since he had PU surgery. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know what that means, he basically had to have his genitalia removed because he was um, blocking with struvite crystals um, and struvite crystals form when the urine is too acidic. So then these crystals form in the urine which can attach to each other and form bladder stones um, and what happens is that 
the urethra gets blocked with these crystals and they, they can't urinate. And that's really incredibly dangerous. Um, so if anybody out there is noticing their cat getting in and out of the litter box a lot, very little bits of pee or nothing coming out, this is, this is an emergency situation and you need to get your cat to the vet ASAP. And if your vet isn't open, you need to seek out an emergency veterinary clinic. This it actually is a really, it's a, it's a life and death situation. Um, so he had the surgery so that he will never block again, which is awesome. Um, but recently he had some blood in his urine. So I took him back up to the vet and um, he has a lot of crystals in his urine again and uh, not 100% sure if he had stones because we didn't do the x-rays uh, because the, the treatment plan was going to be the exact same one way or the other. However, um, my veterinarian is not a holistic veterinarian, so I had to do a lot of research on my own. So um, that's the bad news. The bad news is that, um, you know, he was having bladder issues again. The good news is that this prompted me to completely remove kibble from my cat's diets. And I know this has been a really long time coming. I had been cutting back and cutting back and cutting back. And I had kind of plateaued at this like minimum amount of kibble that I was putting out for my cats every day and um, feeding them wet food three times a day. So I have just completely cut out kibble because you know, him having these bladder issues again really put my mind into overdrive that I, I am their only advocate and I have to do what's right for them. And even if they're not going to take to a raw food diet or all of them are not going to take to a raw food diet, I can add in little bits of fresh food here and there. Um, every day is best. So any amount of fresh food you can get into their diet is gonna be great. I do feed them a really high quality, um, commercially made canned food so that I know they're getting at least some uh, um, liquids in their diet because kibble keeps your pets in a uh, permanent state of dehydration if that's all they're eating. And so that's the good news is that this really prompted me to say, you know what, I can do this, they can do this, and every single little bit of kibble has been removed from our house for um, a few days now. And I, I didn't want to tell you guys about it up front because I'm like, oh, what if something happens? But I'm, I'm really confident now. It's been a few days and the cats are kind of getting through their cranky stage of where's my kibble? And everything's going really well. They're getting their wet food three times a day. And um, I'm checking Riley's pH levels and his urine. And just as a side note, um, I'm giving them uh, as much raw goat's milk as they will accept. And um, Riley's also getting some fluids right now. So we're gonna get this um, crystal issue in his urine. We're gonna reduce his, his urine pH. I'm very confident about that. Um, I ordered some pH test strips and um, it's starting to go down. So. That is the big update with the transition to a raw food diet. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to comment below and I will help you as best as I possibly can. If you guys haven't already joined the Train Positive group, please do so. I will put a link in the description. Um, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed so you never miss another video. And with that guys, I will see you in the next video.